Turning to other news tonight, residents in Bayer County pay this part time judge more than $125,000 a year to work an estimated six to eight hours a week. As the night team's Dylan Collier reports, what started as a temporary salary adjustment has morphed into allegations of nepotism and taxpayer waste at the top of county government. It's tonight's Defenders investigation. <laughs> Judges Robert Tejeda and Ciro Rodriguez manage the caseload for Bear County Precinct 1. Tejeda in a full-time capacity, Rodriguez as a part-time justice of the peace. But the workflow of managing the county's busiest precinct was put to the test in 2018 after Tejeda contracted what officials described as a life-threatening bacterial infection. Late last year, Judge Nelson Wolf described Tejeda's health challenges. At the time I saw him, he could not move his hands or his arms or anything, but he was alert mentally. Video viewed by the defenders showed Tejeda in recent months being brought to work in a medical type van and unloaded while seated in a wheelchair. Still, remarkably, from the start of October 2019 to the end of February, Tejeda presided over more than 20,000 causes, north of 70% of the court's total caseload. Rodriguez, during that same time period, handled less than 30% of causes, according to figures released by Tejeda's staff. Do you have a second? Second. How can that be? In June of 2018, county commissioners, including Ciro's younger brother Chico, agreed to give the part-time judge a short-term salary adjustment to full-time pay, according to this record of the meeting. Commissioners also appointed a backup judge to fill in for Tejeda so he could recover from his serious illness. Nearly two years later, with Tejeda back on the job and handling more than two-thirds of cases, Rodriguez continues to take home full-time pay. Judge Wolf did not respond to a follow-up request for comment for this story. The situation has gotten the attention of the state attorney general's office. A spokeswoman for Ken Paxton said his office is now investigating. Reached via email, Chico Rodriguez said it was an oversight that he didn't verbally abstain from the vote to increase his brother's salary, but challenged county records that indicate he voted in favor of it, saying he did no such thing. Reached by phone, Ciro Rodriguez said the reports provided to us by his court are not reflective of the work that is being done by him. He said this quarterly report submitted to the state in February, which, oh, by the way, still lists Rodriguez as being part-time, is more indicative of his work effort and shows him handling a similar number of cases as JPs in other parts of the county, according to some measurables. We decided to pull our own reports for October through February from the State Office of Court Administration and found Rodriguez presided over a similar percentage of cases, less than 23%. Tejeda attributed the slight discrepancy to using internal day-to-day -day clerks tallies for both courts, but said the OCA's statistics are official and accurate. For the Defenders, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. County auditor records show since Judd Rodriguez's short-term salary adjustment went into effect, he's already received two raises. Hours after speaking with our Dylan Collier, Judge Rodriguez sent us the following statement. It reads, I do not understand why Judge Tejeda would knowingly downplay my work in Precinct 1 while embellishing his own performance as a judge. The information you were provided by Judge Tejeda is simply not true and does not reflect the actual work done by me as a part-time judge doing full-time work to allow Judge Tejeda to recover from his incapacitating illness. In this regard and in accordance with my oath as a judge to seek the actual truth, I am requesting a forensic audit of judge of piece of court records to reflect what judge actually heard and disposed of cases, not just what judge was assigned the case. Rodriguez at first refused to say what agency has asked to conduct an audit. This evening, he shared a letter sent to county leaders, including manager David Smith, in which he requests an audit be done. A county spokeswoman said she doesn't know the status of that request.